Leia here from LeiaForSci.com, and in this video, we're going to look at the haloform reaction, including the iodoform test for a methyl ketone. Haloform comes from halo, which is halogen. In this case, we have X2, which can be Cl2, Br2, or I2. Form is the prefix for a one carbon group or molecule. Think of formic acid, formaldehyde. These are one carbon groups. This reaction happens when you have a terminal ketone. Think about it. The closest a ketone can be to the end is with a methyl group after it, because if the carbonyl is terminal, that's an aldehyde. This is called a methyl ketone because we have methyl and R attached to the ketone. When reacted with excess halogen and base, the product will be a carboxylate, which is the conjugate base of a carboxylic acid, and a halo form, which is a one carbon three halogen containing compound. The halo forms could be chloroform, bromoform, and iodoform. In the last video, we looked at the mechanism for alpha halogenation, where we replaced one of the alpha hydrogens with a halogen. After adding the halogen, we determined that the remaining alpha hydrogen is even more acidic due to the inductive effect of the nearby chlorine, and that if we have enough halogen present, this reaction would happen again, giving us a second halogenation. When your starting molecule is a methyl ketone, where you have three alpha hydrogens, this is where we get a completely different final reaction. The reaction starts out like a simple base promoted alpha halogenation. Remember NaOH is Na plus positive spectator, so get rid of it, and the OH minus is the base that is going to grab the alpha halogen, creating an enolate intermediate. We'll use Br2 as the halogen for this example, and in the next step we have the enolate collapsing back down and the first halogen being added to the molecule. We'll show this reaction happening a second time using another OH- to grab the hydrogen, form the enolate, and then attack another molecule of Br2. Our molecule now has a carbonyl reformed, two halogens, and an even more acidic alpha hydrogen, which means the reaction will happen one more time. We have OH- grabbing the final alpha hydrogen, collapsing the electrons to form the pi bond, kicking up the pi electrons onto oxygen, and giving me the enolate intermediate. One more time, the enolate collapses back down, the pi electrons reach out for a halogen, and we get a third bromine added at the alpha position. The reaction appears to be complete, because we have a carbonyl reformed, three bromines added, and no more alpha hydrogens. The problem is that with so many halogens on the carbon atom, they're all pulling on the electron density, making carbon very partially positive and making it a rare carbon leaving group. It's such a good leaving group, in fact, that we're going to kick it out in the next step. We still have NaOH in solution, and with no more hydrogens to remove, the OH- is going to look for the next most positive carbon to attack, and that'll be the partially positive carbonyl carbon. OH- will attack the carbonyl carbon, kicking up the electrons one more time, but this time we're not creating an enolate, we're simply creating a negative oxygen atom. You should recognize this as a tetrahedral carbonyl addition intermediate. In this case, a carbon atom with a negative and neutral oxygen and a good leaving group. This entire thing is very unstable, and so the negative oxygen's electrons will collapse back down to reform the carbonyl. But instead of kicking out the OH, it kicks out the best leaving group, which in this case is the CBr3. The product is a carboxylic acid and CX3, in this case, Br3 minus. Problem is, we have a carbanion, which is very reactive in the presence of an acid. Bases will attack acids, they will not leave them alone, and so the carbanion will grab the acidic proton from the carboxylic acid, giving oxygen back the electrons. This gives me a negative carboxylate, which we can pair with any of the Na pluses floating around in the solution, and of course the halo form, which in this case is CBr3 bound to an H. If you're looking for a carboxylic acid as your final product, simply react the carboxylate with acid and that will protonate the negative oxygen. The iodoform test is something you would have seen in lab to test for the presence of a methyl ketone. 
We've already seen that reacting a molecule like this with a methyl ketone will give us a halo form as the final product. If we react this methyl ketone with excess iodine in the presence of a base like NaOH, the final product will be a halo form, in this case, iodoform. The shortcut to getting the product is to identify the methyl ketone and simply redraw the product but adding an O- instead of the methyl group. Our second product in this reaction is iodoform, where the hydrogen comes from the OH group, the carbon comes from the methyl group, and iodine comes from the excess I2. Unlike chloroform and bromoform, iodine, because of its increased molecular weight, is going to be a heavy, insoluble molecule, and it'll form a yellow precipitate. If you carry out this reaction in lab and see a yellow precipitate start to cloud your solution, you know that the iodoform reaction took place, and that means you had a methyl ketone, which is a good clue in helping you identify your unknown. A common question that comes up is, if we have a methyl ketone, in the presence of a more substituted group, in this case the ethyl, wouldn't the reaction happen at the more substituted position? The group with two iodines is not a good leaving group because it has a methyl instead of a third iodine on it. How do we get a positive test in the presence of a more substituted group? I want to give a shout out to James from MasterOrganicChemistry.com for clarifying this concept. This reaction takes place in excess I2. And if we're adding so much iodine, yes, we are going to have halogenation at the more substituted alpha position, but we'll also have halogenation at the methyl position so that your product isn't going to be a clean carboxylate. And you'll wind up with some mixture of carboxylate and halogenated alpha carbon. For the purpose of synthesis, this is no good because you're getting side products. But for the purpose of the iodoform test, you'll still get your yellow precipitate and still verify the presence of that methyl ketone. Be sure to join me in upcoming videos where we start looking at enolates to do condensation reactions, including aldol condensation, clasing condensation, and so much more. You can find this entire video series on my website, along with the enolate practice quiz and cheat sheet at layofersci.com slash enolate.